Hello, so I'm introducing Svenja Mayhofer, who's from the University of Lübeck in Germany. And she's going to talk to us a bit about her research that she's been doing on the effects of sleep deprivation on the counter-regulatory response to hypoglycemia. So Svenja, could you tell us a little bit about the background to the study and why you became interested in this, this type of research? Yeah, um, it is known that sleep is involved in the consolidation process of declarative as well as procedural and also emotional memories. But so far, there's less evidence for a role of sleep in consolidating also metabolic memory. So our hypothesis is that recurrent hyperglycemia is a model of metabolic learning. Recurrent hyperglycemia leads to an adaptation of the neuroendocrine counter-regulatory response during subsequent hyperglycemia. In other words, the counter-regulatory response to recurrent hyperglycemia is diminished. And this phenomenon is very common in patients with diabetes and is known in everyday clinical practice as hypoglycemia unawareness syndrome. For example, when participants sleep in an fMRI scanner after learning, specific brain areas such as the left anterior hippocampus show increased activity, which means consolidation of memory content is dependent on hippocampal processes. Moreover, we know that recurrent hyperglycemia induces an adaptation process of newer endocrine counter-regulatory response with a strong anatomical overlap of involved brain nuclei. So what inspired us to look at the effect of sleep on the counter-regulatory adaptation to hyperglycemia is that we think that sleep um, plays an important role in metabolic memory. And our hypothesis is that sleep, sleep loss after repeated hypoglycemia should prevent the consolidation of an adapted, and that means reduced, counter-regulatory response to further hypoglycemia. Yeah, that's a, um, that uh, sounds like quite a complex, um, so complex issue to be looking at. How did you actually set up the study? Who, who did you select as your cohort? And, and what, um, how did the experiment work? Um, so in our study, we had uh, 15 healthy and normal weight participants uh, who took part in two experimental sessions scheduled in a randomized balanced crossover design. Um, on the first day of each session, we performed a stepwise hyperinsulinemic hypoglycemic clamp in the morning, and we performed another simplified hypoglycemic clamp in the afternoon. So that's a clamp at which the, um, the glucose levels are kept artificially low in the participants, is that right? Yeah. So this clamp served to acquire this uh, metabolic memory content. And um, during the subsequent night, the participants were allowed to either sleep for a regular eight hours or they had to stay awake for the complete night. Um, on the next morning, a third stepwise hyperinsulinemic hypoglycemic clamp was performed to recall the counter-regulatory response. And um, all of the experiments were performed in a soundproof sleep laboratory, and we had an infrared camera so that we could monitor the participants during the entire experiment. And we also um, recorded the different sleep stages and the sleep condition, which were all in accordance with usual sleep stages in healthy young men. So with, with the um, different, the two groups of, or the, the two sessions where they were allowed to sleep or not sleep, did they have particular tools to help them stay awake? Were they given lots of coffee or books or um, apps to, to try to keep them awake? Um, no, we, we had to... Um, had to do uh, to help them to stay awake. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It can't be easy. And so, what were your what were your main findings then um, from this from the the um, the two two stages of the study? Uh, well, we assessed the major counter regulatory hormones, adrenaline, growth hormone, and glucagon. And as expected, the counter regulatory response to the third hypoglycemic clamp was distinctly dampened after a night with regular sleep. And in contrast, sleep deprivation preserved the counter-regulatory response to recurrent hypoglycemia for the major counter-regulatory hormones, adrenaline, growth hormone, and glucagon. And we also assessed the participants' subjective symptoms um, of hypoglycemia using a standardized symptom list. And in line with the hormonal data, uh, also hypoglycemia awareness was preserved after sleep loss and this was most pronounced for neuroglucopenic symptoms. 
That's interesting. So slightly hard for me to get my head around that. So does that mean that sleep deprivation is on some level beneficial for, for people with um, type 1 diabetes and, and impaired hypoglycemic awareness? Well, uh, we know that chronic sleep deprivation or also a chronic short sleep duration has negative effects on the uh, beta cell function and promotes the development of type 2 diabetes. Here we talk about hormonal hypoglycemic counterregulation, which is a totally different topic. So acute, acute and short-term sleep loss after a hypoglycemic episode can help in the acute situation to preserve the counterregulatory response to recurrent hypoglycemia. So um, what some, do you have um, an idea of some of the mechanisms yet, either from your own research or some of the related research um, around you, what those mechanisms might be in terms of laying down the memories and the, the counter-regulatory response? Well, our findings are in line with convincing evidence for a close interaction of sleep, wakefulness and glucose homeostasis. From our study design, we cannot rule out a distinct molecular mechanism but these data call for further investigations into the role of sleep-related memory programming and chronic hypoglycemia unawareness. Yes. Yes. So, so what's what's going to be next then? What? Um, how do you do? You plan to roll this study out into a wider group of participants, or to extend it in different ways? Well, uh, we are very excited to conduct a follow-up study. We now want to check whether this effect of preserved hypoglycemia counterregulation after sleep loss can also be maintained in long term. And this may open new perspectives for prevention of hypoglycemia unawareness as a debilitating complication of diabetes treatment. And is some, um, because I think your study participants did um, were non-diabetic, is that is that right? So, yes. um, so do you think, will you be able to carry out the study and see, um, see if you can conduct the study in people with diabetes? Is that yes. some... Yeah, that's also very interesting. So maybe in the future we yes. can um, study with diabetes patients. Yeah. And do you think some of these um, areas that you're looking at mechanistically could be subject to, to drug targets or some other form of, of treatment or... Or are you a little bit further away from, from knowing how, how treatment can, can assist in this, this regard? So I'm just thinking about sort of the clinical impact of, the, um, of your findings at this stage, whether that's something that um, is still a little bit in the distance. It's in the distance, so we cannot um, propose a mechanism for clinical practice yet. No, it's, um, yeah, sometimes you need these early studies that hopefully um, help us understand better um, how things work. Right. Thank you. Well, that's very interesting. It's, um, it's helped me understand better the, um, the research you've been doing. And um, yeah, thank you very much for your time, Svenja. Thank you very much. Yeah.